Alors, bienvenue sur MAG. On est au Festival de Gérard May aujourd'hui avec Anna Bergholm. How are you today? I'm great, thanks. First the first uh, time watching this film with the live audience, so yeah, yes, I'm very happy. I think you noticed everybody was happy. Yeah, yes. <laughs> happy <again. laughs> yes, yes. Like, uh, welcome to the Vosges. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so to talk about your movie, uh, it's the story about a young lady um, who is living with a perfect family. Like, yeah. supposed to be a perfect family. Yeah. And uh, can you talk about this family? Because everything is perfect, pink, blue, uh, yes. everything is recorded. Yes, so uh, this girl has a mother who is, uh, is kind of a vlogger. She's doing her uh, vlog of her family, kind of shooting everything about this uh, family for all the world to see. And she has really decorated the whole house to portray her own image as perfect mm -hmm. house. and. Uh, and uh, the way the house is uh, decorated is all pastel colors and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, rose wallpapers everywhere and uh, a lot of glass items and at the same time it's kind of a world where it's quite a the sunshine that is always outside don't really have a warm inside so it always feels a little bit cold mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly at uh, the beginning of the movie a crow come inside the place yeah and destroy everything, like uh, that's the start of the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because a crow, uh, it's common for malediction and uh, bad things which yeah. will happen. And uh, why did you choose uh, a fantastic movie uh, yeah. with your story? Why fantastic movie? Well, it's, it's great that in a fantastic film, uh, the kind of hidden emotions of the character can get some kind of external form. And I really want to use that in this uh, storytelling. Mm, okay. And uh, the young lady, Tinia, uh, so she's studying gymnastics, and her mother is always trying to uh, improve herself, but yeah. uh, pushing too much, maybe. Yes. And um, there is obviously a question about uh, neurotic experiences and trauma between uh, the mother and uh, a child. Uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about this connection between the mother and a child? Yes, uh, so in this this mother character really, it's hinted in the film that she also has been a kind of a athlete herself uh, way back, and uh, and uh, now she's not anymore. She has had some accident way back, so now she really wants her daughter to kind of continue her own dream, and she's mm -hmm. kind of mother who really uh, she sees her daughter. Yeah, she feels yeah, she really sees her daughter as her best friend and uh, and really kind of controls every aspect in this daughter's life and wants this daughter to kind of be something that she can portray to the world and show how talented her daughter is and uh, kind of feel success through her daughter. Yeah, it made me think about uh, a story recently about an influencer. Her name yeah. was Marina Joyce or something like this. And uh, she was recording herself all the time. Yeah. And uh, she was trying to ex express some uh, signals of um, um, she wasn't happy yeah. and uh, she was almost about to suicide herself yeah. and uh, is it something you wanted to to, about, to, to talk about uh, this society where everybody is just uh, filming all the time yeah. what they do, what they want to yeah. be yes, I, uh, and that was something that when we developed the story together with our screenwriter Ilya Rauti, so we wanted to tell this story about people who are keeping up appearances and then I thought that today's way of keeping up appearances is really social media mm -hmm. and so I really wanted to tell about this um, this need of kind of portraying your life it, as kind of image of certain kind of perfection and, uh, and uh, yeah. stick. Yeah, with a yeah. stick, and so so in, in our scenes, the mother is more talking to a screen and a stick <laughs> than, yeah. than to her daughter. So, and she yeah. wants to control everything. Yeah. And uh, there is an interesting point uh, at, at one moment. Uh, she doesn't really control uh, her situation because she's surprised by her daughter uh, while she was about to have an affair with yeah. someone. Yeah. And uh, she still continues to control the situation yes. Yes. and uh, she involved her daughter in this yeah. situation yeah. and at one point there is two different houses uh, there is a perfect one yeah. and there is 
not the destroyed one, but yes. uh, the more common one. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about this character and yeah. the other one? Yes, that, that was very uh, uh, something I wanted to portray in this film was this that um, our uh, our uh, family, our the Stinia's family and the mother, they live in a very kind of. Uh, it's very perfect house in an area we found luckily from Latvia an area where uh, it was kind of upper class upper middle class area where all the houses were kind of very identical and uh, so everything was controlled and then this Tinia goes to uh, uh, another house and at first she finds it the situation kind of weird and scary so the house looks like very classic haunting house and, like yes, and then uh, she gets to know this one um, terror character and gets a bond of him and then suddenly everything is shown in a very different light and there's some life in the house so everything is not so matching and perfect and uh, kind of overly tidy and there's actually a, the sun is warming in the rooms and the birds are singing and so we used all those kind of little elements kind of making people feel that there's life in this house. Yeah, and there is also uh, like a color switch, yeah. like, a, like a mirror. Yes. Like because uh, at one point she's just entering a special room and uh, it's blue uh, yeah. roses. Yeah. And in, in her room, in a classic uh, house, it's completely different, it's pink. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and then, uh, so in this kind of, uh, there's this little baby room, so the idea is that mother has actually decorated that room to so she has, is kind of starting to decorate everything also in this Terra's house to be kind of again her world but also in this house there is kind of a more earth tones which are kind of a very well, natural down to earth colors so yeah and in Tinia's house we use a lot of pastel colors mm -hmm. and what do you think about the dad character when uh, I was thinking about him he's quite special because uh, he He's uh, wearing something, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and uh, he seems to be quite passive all the time. Yeah. Uh, was it something you wanted to talk about in a family perfect one, like uh, the control is just uh, in the end of the mother? Uh, yeah, well, I wanted to um, tell with this uh, father character, I think he's also the kind of person who is uh, escaping or facing his own kind of difficult emotions, mm -hmm. so, so it's it's kind of person that if you are being bullied and you are laughing along with the bullies, you can kind of try to imagine that all is well and I'm not actually bullied. So he's that kind of person who is kind of uh, letting the mother do what she wants and uh, and kind of acts out as if uh, she, he's okay with everything and everything's fine and maybe he thinks that as long as he can act like he's happy and everything's fine in his life, he can. Mm -hmm kind of imagine that so it is and it's more difficult to stand up and face your emotions. Mm. And uh, about the monster itself or maybe herself, yeah. uh, the fact that the, the young lady is just uh, hatching yeah. like uh, an egg mm -hmm. all the time, is it also an image of um, a picture uh, of what she wants to express yeah. herself? Yeah, and that's uh, how I see it, so when it kind of hatches, why, what I thought and how I would like to be it. It's kind of like a, it's very thin, first of all, because there is this kind of subtle theme of eating disorder in this film. And it's kind of size of a teenager and it's very ugly and slimy and it's totally kind of deformed. So it's totally opposite of this uh, perfect gymnast that this mother yeah, wants her daughter to be. Yeah, and then it's, uh, and but I see it, it's kind of like a smelly teenager who rages to its parents and still wants to be loved. So it's not an evil character. That's why we plan it to have very big eyes. So it's kind of like like a baby eyes wide open. Yeah, yeah it's a little bit like uh, the monster under the bed. Or yeah. just uh, hiding behind the dressing stuff. And yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe a last question about your influences. Uh, what kind of movie uh, did you watch for this movie, like for inspiration? Yeah, well, I didn't really have any that kind of, I watched many films, but the, uh, as a filmmaker, when I start to design a film, I never think about other films actually that much, but it was more for the creature, actually, that I had in, I had admired, like, Cronenberg's films that used yeah, a lot of practical obviously. effects, and E.T., we, we, we did talk about this film being like, um, 
kind of a twisted version of E.T. for grown-ups. So, uh, yeah, and and uh, and also the so the creature it was made as an animatronic puppet. So yeah, I it had, looks like an animatronic. Yeah. So I really I knew that I needed the because I wanted it to have real physicality. So I contacted. Uh, I googled the best animatronic designer in the world because I wanted to be an animatronic puppet, and Google told me that the best animatronic designer in the world it is Gustav Hürgen who has done all the creatures. I mean, he's been the lead animatronic designer in Star Wars films and in Jurassic World and Prometheus. So I contacted him. And he just made a movie which name is Mad Girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good one if yeah. you have the occasion to see it. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yes, yeah, so he fell in love with the story and his team came and uh, created us this puppet and uh, we had five puppeteers on set moving the puppet with rods and they had worked in all Star Wars films and so on. So it was really uh, admiration for this uh, using practical effects. So, uh, yeah, it's different because it's more organic. Yeah, it's, so, it's more organic and it, it's kind of, I really wanted to have the feeling that you can touch this creature and it's really mm, there. So there's a shape about to be. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you for yeah. the time you gave us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and that was your magic.